Today, we are going to make some fan tuan, which is a Taiwanese breakfast staple with roots in Shanghai. Hey y'all, I'm Trig Brown from Lin Sun Restaurant and Bakery here in Brooklyn, New York. First, we're going to take some of the short grain sticky rice. It's, it's very important that it's short grain sticky rice, not long grain. Basically, I'm gonna put a hot pan on the stove to get it hot. We're just gonna stir the rice while it heats up. We're not gonna get any color or cook the rice. We're just toasting it. Got called out in the comments last lot last time for saying dumb things, so I apologize for that. There's like a funny one that was like, a fat man really knows how to eat or something like that. And I was like, yes, sir. <laughs> a lot of times when you toast rice, it gets like aromatic and tastes kind of nutty. This actually smells sweet when it when you toast it and heat it up. Winson is over four years old now. And I tried to make Fan Tuan back when we first opened up. And I did like a horrible bastardized version. And it was like a disgrace to all Fan Tuan. After it's hot, we're gonna massage in a little bit of neutral oil, take it to the bowl. I was telling Eddie Wong about it when he was eating at the restaurant. He offered to show me how he does his rice for Fan Tuan. And uh, this dry toasting and oil technique is something I learned from him. So uh, basically for each cup of rice, you do about a tablespoon of oil. One, two, I just stir it up. Uh, this helps the rice stay lubricated while it cooks, so they'll stick to one another, but still um, stay individual rice grains. It's important that you use a metal bowl because it retains the heat from the rice. After we massage the oil in, transfer the rice to the rice cooker, pour the water into the rice bowl so we can make sure we get all these little grains. If you don't have a rice cooker at home, you can just bring the water to a boil, mix your rice in, turn it down to the simmer, put the top on and leave it for like 15 to 25 minutes. When I transfer the rice into my rice cooker, I like to give it one quick stir to make sure it all settles nice and evenly. Hit the top, set it to cook. It'll take about 30 minutes. Usually uh, when you rinse rice, like with sushi rice or with jasmine rice, part of that is cleaning the rice and uh, getting that dirty starch off. With uh, sticky rice, you don't want to wash the starch off. You want that like sweet, that sticky starch to stay on. While the rice is finishing, we're going to double fry these uh, crullers. It, that's become their accepted name in English, but these are these are called yotao. It's basically just this really crispy, light, textured, delicious fried dough stick. Cut them in half. I use the scraps for like a crouton that I put in our dojang or, or soy milk. When I cut it in half like this, it makes the uh, Fan Tuan roll a lot more evenly if they're all the exact same size. In the restaurant business, the most important thing is consistency, or at least that's what all like the old timers told me when I was a dishwasher. We have some oil getting hot in the cast iron. That's what we'll uh, fry these yotao in. We'll also fry a couple eggs over easy. We're gonna crash the yolk though, so it doesn't like bleed out into the rice when we roll it up. The key to it is letting it set and cool down a little bit and the yolk kind of congeals a little and it becomes like a softer jammy consistency. I like to put a lot of salt and pepper on my fried eggs. Fun ones are usually either sweet or savory. Um, the sweet ones come with crushed peanuts, sugar, fried cruller, wrapped in the sticky rice. Savory, they usually come with the cruller, pickled radish, or salted radish, and uh, rosong or pork floss. These eggs are super crispy, kind of like fish. They just like lift off the pan. I just let it chill for a second. It can still be a little runny. I mean, it's not like a you know, sunny side up egg. Now we're gonna let these eggs chill out and then we're gonna fry some of these guys. The fun one that we're gonna make is uh, definitely not like traditional. I, I don't really like to think anything I do is traditional just cause I'm not Taiwanese. I think where mine would vary from something that you eat you know, on the street or at a Fu Hong uh, breakfast food court in Taipei. You know, I put the sweet soy sauce in, in my fan tuan uh, and the fried egg. I also think the way we trim it up and the, the size, it's a little smaller than usual. When I'm frying something, I'm always going for golden brown delicious. In this case, we want to go just a little bit past golden brown delicious. It, it's like an exercise in, uh, in textures. You know, soft, sticky rice, this dried pork cloth that's been saturated, the egg yolk, salty radishes. And then like the, you know, kind of the alien, you know, from the scallions. You know, it's got all these different contrasting textures. And uh, the key to that is having this super crispy, crunchy yo chow in the center. It really does kind of have that like butterfinger multi-layer crunch. I always am trying to encourage people to go to, you know, their local Asian market. A lot of people see something like yo chow or 
um, sweet soy sauce or bean paste, and they, they're like, oh, that's impossible to get, I'll never be able to make this recipe. I really encourage everybody to, to go to these places and try to pursue these ingredients, because this is like something that you would eat every day in Taiwan. You know, maybe give it a try, and you might be finding something you're in love with. I'm gonna cut some scallions. Fat guy in a tiny bowl. <laughs> my buddy, uh, um, Chia Ting Ye, he was born in Taiwan. He's my go-to guy for uh, like history questions or you know contextualization of you know ingredients. He was like, dude, you should put an avocado in your fontuan. So I'm probably gonna get shit for this because this is not something you would ever see in a fontuan. But when he said that, I was like, that sounds bomb. You can probably use cellophane or like a sushi mat to roll the rice. You, you probably don't have to use plastic crap, but I think like a big part of this is eating it on, on the go. Nice big square. Take a nice big scoop. I try to make sure to put a little extra so I can eat a little extra. Um, it's stuck together like a sheet, but all the rice grains are completely separated. I like a lot of pork floss, a bunch of scallions. I use the whites too, I cut the whites down. This is the salted or preserved radish. I try to be a little careful with these guys because they're salty. We can't go too ham with this avocado. I'll eat the rest later. And we're only gonna do a few slices. This is an incredible product. This is like a firewood bean paste. It's unbelievable, it's super salty, super sweet. I just do a little bit. The next step, is rolling this thing up. I put my uh, little fingers on the cruller. This is the uh, moment of truth. Sometimes, uh, you know, you go for a bigger boy and it gets a little messy. That's all right. Fold it over. All right. This is a fat boy. Um, I just do a little, some holes. Make a little knot. This is great. Like you make like six of these and pack them in your lunchbox. I just had a daughter. When she's going to school, I'm gonna give her some of these. There's your fontoine with avocado. I've officially ruined this dish. I'm sure people are gonna be very disappointed. In it. I'm excited to try this thing out. Avocado is good. It's like a little buttery texture. Be crispy butterfinger crunch from the Yochiao. The roast song is super savory. The egg um, makes it feel like breakfast. I mean, I'm always thinking about things in terms of sandwiches because it's like my favorite food. In essence, this is just like the perfect breakfast sandwich. Thanks for checking this video out. Try making one of these. Go out to your local Asian market. Pursue some of these ingredients you haven't seen before. Put some random stuff in here. Make it your own. For the recipe, click the link below or come visit us at the bakery in Brooklyn. I kind of like it when people make fun of me. There's like a funny one that was like, that guy uh, only showers when it starts to itch. <laughs> I was like, I mean, it's so good.